people in general on people's company were owned by the Tillingham's group of companies of which Mansfield district was part of it and if you look very very carefully you observe them once you will see just here where the conductor used to put his foot on to wind the number you will see green paint because originally it was a Mansfield district bus in green the E4 was the service from Alfred to Brangfield by a South Wheatfield and Westington. The E2 was Alfred to Matlock by a Christ and Holloway. The E3 was the Alfred to Matlock by a Westington and on this road and so on and so forth. But uh, in its original clothes it lives down in the Midland Railway Centre of Butterley and we're not, Johnny's not going to change it. It's going to stay original. I just wish you'd take that Melbourne jacket off, but come on, young man. The original Mr. Goldtop. Come on, Andy, get yourself out. God bless you, John. Just listen to that. Well, we mentioned Gomer earlier on, didn't we? Well, Gomer was a breach of the 84 commercial motors. This is going back to 1965, and most of the lorries had the young Killing Stevens three cylinder two stroke. But this one, you can tell by the clunk of it, this has got the alternative which was a Perkins six cylinder diesel engine. This has been an ongoing restoration for quite a while now, but Steve Woodins, if you'd have recognised that cab from a few years ago, it looks as though it did hit the telegraph pole in the middle, it was more or less like a V, but what a lovely job he's made of it, and still getting on with it. He's got the family in with him, I just hope they're all behaving. Go on then. How's Dad? Is he all right? Is he here? Oh, well, remember me to him. The Ford really never got into big commercials. They had the D-Series, the top piece of the TK. But after the D-Series, it came into the Ford Cargo. And these were great little lorries. Great six-cylinder. The biggest problem with these is you can never keep a cab on them. They've rusted like crazy. And I know where there's one of these for sale at the moment with a wonderful horse box on it. Anybody wanting to do some restoration pro project, 750 quid. But if you can find a good cab, that's the problem. Now, I've known this one for quite a few years. I don't buy the same gentleman now, but isn't that lovely? Keep looking after your man, there ain't many of them about. Just look at that. Now we're going back a little bit. You saw the big this is the highwayman, exactly the same principle. Now, going back to 1966. Now, if you remember the second vehicle in the arena, the Volvo F86, we were still producing them, and you wonder why our lads didn't like them. No sleeper cab, no facilities. Again, used in twos and threes for heavy haulage. This one for breaking roadways at Shelford. But it's owned by my good mate Phil Ufton. Bless you, Phil. Now, Mercedes. Mercedes were very late coming into the commercial market in this country because Mercedes always used to have the long bonneted lorries. And if you're watching your television programs, even today, in Saudi Arabia, Iraq, and all those sorts of places, still loads of the bonneted Mercedes about. And the reason they were not successful over here is because in this country we judge the length of a vehicle, the carrying capacity, because of its total length. So that's from the front bumper to the back bumper. In America and in Europe it's different. It was from the headboard to the back of the wagon. So therefore in this country, if you've got a long body, it was taking the space of about four pallets that you could have got extra on the back. So they wanted the cab over version with the cab to the front. Four pallets is a lot every day of the week. But they eventually started to change. And now with the modern Actros and one or two others, still a beautiful lorry. Now, somebody's going to be busy. Where did you find that? 